let's just look at the idea of I'm by myself and say, okay, that ha that's a perception. You know, there's a line from the Bible, if God is with me, who can be against me? And you might say, if God is with me, I am never alone. But we'll say that it's a perception, so it could be a perception of feeling alone. And even praying alone. You know, I'm praying in solitude. I'm praying alone. And what I would say is that um, what helped me was, there was one line in the Course I read one time where it said, whenever you perceive that anything is lacking in any situation, it is what you have failed to give. I was just like, oh my God, you mean I've never actually been lacking in any situation ever in my whole life, but I just had this re reluctance to give? I, there was just something that was like, oh, hold back. You know, we've all had that withhold, some, you know, you know, don't, don't put all your, your eggs in one basket and, and always save for a raining day. You know, we've been taught to withhold, that it's prudent to withhold. Even in relationships, you know, don't give it all away, you know, string them along a little bit, make them work for it, make them chase. Be mysterious. <laughs> yes, be serious, and make them pursue. And who taught us this stuff, you know? What, when God is a giver, why wouldn't we want to be givers, unconditional givers? So, so really when we're praying, we're just, we're praying for opportunities to give. We're, we're praying for opportunities to extend. That's why I was so happy when I, I got happier and happier, and then I started getting all these invitations. I thought, oh, this is wonderful. Look at all these chances to give it away, give it away, give it away, give it away. There's an eagerness, even, with wanting to give it away. So that, like, washes away the, the lack. Like, in the Song of Prayer, Jesus says, you know, you pray continuously, but when you believe you're lacking, you can't help but pray and ask for things. And most of us were raised with that, you know. Mm -hmm. God, can you give me this or offer me this? We, we, there were supplications. That's really what the prayers were. You know, you don't tend to hear a Buddhist with supplications. They're like, open your mind, be still, be receptive and open, and listen. You know, it's not all this talking. Okay, and I would like the new car, and, and uh, you know, please bring me my soulmate soon. And you know, it's all these questions. You know, and in the East, it's like what? It's be still, <laughs> receive. And and I think the deeper you go, it's more that that you're opening to a purification, a stillness of mind, where you want to have nothing on the altar, uh, you, except. God, I, I want you, I want you on my altar, I want God on my altar, nothing else. I want to empty my mind, my altar. So prayer is a means of, like, of emptying the altar. And we can't help but pray for what we believe we're lacking, you know, that's just the way it works. Uh, Jesus is like, oh, we're fine with that, but that's just the lower rung on the ladder, you know, you'll come up much higher. Eventually, you know, you'll get to the top of the ladder and there'll be one prayer left. Uh, in Jesus' terms, Father, what is your will for me? Whoa, that's a different kind of prayer than, you know, help me on my travels and make sure I have enough food to eat. Father, what is your will for me? That's like saying, give it to me all, give me everything, give me my complete inheritance. Okay, I was a prodigal son, the prodigal daughter, I wandered off for a while in time and space, but I'm back. <laughs> and I'm asking for the whole inheritance. And in the Course, Jesus says, it's not that you ask for too much. You ask for far too little. It's like going to God with a little thimble. You know, those little thimbles that for sewing, and taking your little thimble, trembling. Could I please, could you fill my cup? And Jesus is like, is that as big a cup as you can come up with? A thimble? Get a bucket, get a pail, get a bathtub, get a hot tub, get a pool. I can... I can fill my cup run is over. <laughs> but you're asking, if your asking is limited, then your your prayers are limited. And and that's a worthiness thing. When when there's a sense of the loneliness, the isolation, that comes in from a worthiness thing. Somehow that there's a belief I'm not worthy of so much love. But that's what you were just addressing. You know, when you start to feel all the love swirling in your heart, you want to give it away. You just wanna Give it away abundantly. Yeah. I had a friend that called today, just she was just saying, 
you're coming to Georgia, I know you're coming to Georgia, and I was just praying, praying, praying today, you know, am I really supposed to drive an hour and a half to see David when he comes to Georgia? And she said, I was just praying for a sign. And then I remember, because about like two hours before that, I had my little phone, and it came up, and this little thing on Facebook came up, you know, to poke somebody, and I poked her. And, and so when she was calling, I was praying for a sign. Am I supposed to see David? She said, I said, yeah, I poked you. She said, yeah, that's what I was going to say. You poked me. You never poked me. You've never poked me. <laughs> this is a Facebook prompt for how the Holy Spirit works. You've never, ever, ever poked, poked me, and you poked me. So now I know I'm supposed to come. So where are you going to be? I'm going to come and, <laughs> and join you for dinner. You know, it was just a little symbol. And I, it's involuntary. I wasn't going through there. It just went, oh, and the Spirit did it, and then that was part of this whole encounter of just extending love over dinner, just from a little Facebook poke. It just shows you there's just so many opportunities. Even the seemingly tiniest thing can, can make all the difference, you know, as far as extending the love.